You guys asked us repeatedly in the comments to check out an Apollo scooter and here we have the Apollo City. Andrew, what do we have to expect? It's a dual motor scooter with speeds up to 32 miles per hour, highly water resistance at an IP66 rating. It's supposed to be a ton of fun. You guys asked for this and now you get it. Let's check this out. Oh, box within a box, so that's nice. That's always good for packaging. It's a 54.6 volt charger with a three amp output. It's a 20 amp hour battery, so this should take you slightly under seven hours to charge from empty to full. Nice little tool set. This is pretty sweet. This is the first time I've ever seen a scooter shipped with extra bolts. And the bolts are numbered and there's a guide so you know what the bolts are and where they're supposed to go. Yeah, so it comes with a phone holder, which is perfect because you are gonna use their Bluetooth app to adjust like the regen braking and all the other settings. So it's nice that it's provided with one. But man, this is a nice looking scooter. So yeah, those bolts that are with the toolkit are just extra bolts. These are the bolts for the handlebar. So I need to scan this QR code to unlock this top speed and activate the warranty. So, okay, so scooter's on. Pretty much at a full charge. Super easy to set up, just connecting it to the app right now. Great looking scooter and very different from a lot of the other scooters that tend to just be clones of past scooters. This is something very unique and I'm excited to go through this. Hey, let's start with this cockpit. We have some drum brake levers up at the top, throttle and also regen braking, turn signals that are up high and low. One thing I like about these turn signals is it has two options to shut it off. It either auto times out, or you can turn it off just by hitting the button again. We have three different speed modes. Sport mode will allow you to go up to 32 miles per hour in the dual motor scooter version. For this being a dual 500 watt motor scooter, a lot of them are typically a lot smaller. This scooter seems pretty tall and nice wide handlebars. But let's actually do some measurements. Handlebars are about 26 and a half inches wide. Handlebar height, is about 42 inches tall. Pretty decent size. Nice soft grips. And then they also have a little checklist done by Jack Yang. The data was packaged, shows your serial number, and then also just shows you everything that they checked on the scooter. Accountability right there. Jack, the scooter looks great. We hope that it runs great because you went through that checklist and I anticipate that this scooter is gonna be fantastic. Hold on to handlebars with both hands at all times, <laughs> which is a good lesson because this is exactly why Jimmy's son just broke his hand on a scooter. My son was riding a scooter at college at night, going home from the library, which I commend him for studying and being at the library, but he was only riding one-handed, hit a little bump in the road, lost his balance, fell hard on that hand, and and now he's gonna need surgery. So always two hands on your handlebars when riding a scooter. Has a light in the center that's adjustable with a reflector. We have this new folding mechanism that they've upgraded on the new City Pros. It reminds us of the Rions or V-Set scooters. Normally they're not really spring-loaded. Normally they're just kind of floppy. So that's kind of neat that it's spring-loaded and pops open. There's a hook on this when it folds. And I really like that because a lot of times we've had it where when you lift a scooter, because the folding mechanism doesn't lock into place correctly, this can drop on you. And Jimmy's had a scooter drop on his arm and it really messed him up. Just adding that little hook ensures that it stays together when it's folded. This front has a little center notch. So when it comes to the center, you feel it locks in the center, which should help with stability. Moving down, you have spring suspension, a tire hugger, 10 inch by 2.7 inch tubeless pneumatic tires that are self-healing. They have a gel in them. If they do get punctured, they should seal up. 500 watt motor with a drum brake. Moving down, you have a black silicone deck. It kind of tapers off as you get towards the rear. A small little kick plate with the handle. So that's nice for lifting the scooter since it is 65 pounds. Dual spring suspension. Another 10 inch by 2.7 inch tubeless pneumatic tires, 500 watt motor, and a drum brake. Let's see how this tail light works when it breaks. So it flashes when it breaks, and that's also when you go to regen brake or when you go to brake with the mechanical drum brakes. And then this kickstand, it's kind of like a cast metal. It's got a good flip action. And then coming over here, there's a charge port. The charge port's interesting where it clips into place and locks. So that's kind of nice. Should help for the water resistant rating of the IP66. All right, we are going to wait for this to get freshly charge and then we're gonna take this for a spin. Okay, well, since we did the unboxing, we have some great news. Andrew, what happened? I had a baby! So Andrew and his wife, they had their first baby, little baby Dash. So give the video a thumbs up. Congratulate Andrew and his growing family. But today we are gonna talk about the growing family of scooters that we're reviewing, and it's the Apollo. And this is our first ever Apollo that we have reviewed. So we are excited to tell you what we love about it, what we hate about it, and who we think should get this scooter.
There's a lot of things to like about this. I'll start off. It looks fantastic. It does not look like any of the other scooters that were reviewed. On top of the eye-catching design, the regen braking is by far the best regen braking I've ever tried on any electric scooter. You can pretty much stop with only the regen braking. At first, I was really disappointed that this had drum brakes. However, the drum brakes work pretty well. So this is the first time I've been able to power slide with drum brake. Overall design of the handlebars are nice and wide. The turn signals are bright on the front and rear. The center notch design of the handlebars where it basically will notch itself in the center. It's hard to see in the video, but it wants to come back to center and it kind of has a notch in there where it locks into place. One small feature that I love about it is that they have this little clip on here to lock it in place when it's folded. This is just something super simple, but super needed. Really smart safety feature that they've added to the scooter. Makes it for easy lifting, but no matter how much I shake, it's not gonna fall out of place. And then the handlebar doesn't get all squirrely on you going left or right. Really sweet design. I like the design. I like the minimalism of the wires. There's just these two cables that are exposed and I like the turn signals. Buttons feel nice and solid. All can be controlled with your thumbs and the best part is the turn signals will automatically turn off or you can turn them off just by hitting them again. Normally it's just one or the other so very small subtle changes that set the scooter apart from other scooters. And then I do love that the tires are tubeless pneumatic tires and self-healing. The rear handle works well as a kick plate. It's not too aggressive so you can put your foot up on here but also makes it a nice place to lift up the scooter. And then the brake light is integrated into this rear fender slash tire hugger. The light is nice and bright. And when you look at it, you can't see where the wires are. On a lot of these other scooters, the wires are exposed. Here, you can't even see how this is wired in. The tire hugger looks good, it works well, and they've done a really good job hiding the wires. Big thing about the scooter is it doesn't have a huge top speed, but the acceleration is ultra smooth and accelerates very fast. The top speed is 32 miles per hour, but it is dual motors and can climb hills perfectly fine. And being a commuter scooter, you wanna make sure it has good water resistance, which this does, just in case you get caught in a rainstorm or you're riding home in wet conditions. This is IP66 water resistance rating, which protects it against water and dust. And on top of that, the app works really well when it's working. You can adjust the regen braking, you can adjust acceleration, you can track your ride, and you can also check on the controller to see what the temperature is and send diagnostics if you have any scooter issues. And I noticed you said the app works well when it's working. Does it not work sometimes? Oh, well, I was gonna talk about that with things that we don't like. So we're gonna keep riding. At our next stop, we'll talk about what we don't like about the scooter. All right, Andrew is playing around with the app, which has some pretty cool functionality. We'll go over that in a sec. But while he's doing that, I'm warming up my hands because it is really, really cold today. My wife got me uh, these hand warmers. They're electric hand warmers and they work really well. I've taken them skiing. They also double it as an external battery pack. I'm just warming my hands through the gloves. If you live in a cold weather area and you want something to warm up your hands, check these out. The app can be really finicky. Basically what happened was I was able to connect to the app at first, change all the settings on the scooter, but then all those settings just went away and I was never able to connect back to the scooter. Based off the reviews of the app from other people, I found out that I just needed to disconnect the scooter, reset my account, and then I was able to reconnect and that fixed everything. Andrew spent a lot of time on that app, getting all the settings just right, and then to have the app not be able to connect, it was very frustrating. But once we got it to connect and working properly, it's been working pretty darn good. The other thing that I have an issue with is this light. It says it's a 500 lumen light, which is pretty weak. And you can adjust the angle of it, so that is nice. Wish it was a little bit brighter, for safe night riding. Overall, almost every single commuter scooter we've ever tested and reviewed doesn't have a light that's sufficient for night riding. The handlebars, really nice that they're wide, but they're very wide for a commuter scooter, which makes it difficult sometimes if you're navigating tight spaces. The reason why these commuter scooters are getting wider isn't just for comfort. It's actually because when they come with these turn signals on the side, that adds probably an extra inch on both sides. It's not something that you would hold on 
too comfortably. It's just there for the lighting system. So while the lights are really nice, know that it's got a bigger footprint when you're trying to get into doors, get through hallways and through tight spaces. Yeah, and another thing about the cockpit is these brake levers take a lot of force to engage. I prefer hydraulic brakes where they're a lot easier to pull, but these are really stiff, but it does come with one big plus. I can power slide with these drum brakes. I've never been able to power slide with drum brakes in the past. So although I'm not a big fan of how hard you have to pull on these, I do love that I can still do a little bit of tricks with the scooter. I really enjoy that it comes with a bell. I think having a bell is necessary to notify pedestrians, but a scooter that goes this fast over 30 miles an hour, you find yourself on the road a lot. And there were a couple times where cars were encroaching because all we had was that little bell it didn't really let them know we were there. It was kind of funny watching. I think maybe you tried using a little dinghy bell to let a car know you were coming. It's called the city. You're gonna be riding in the city with other cars. A horn would be a huge advantage for the scooter. We noticed this as we were riding through some puddles. The rear tire hugger works great. The front tire hugger, it doesn't have super good coverage. So you can see where the debris and the mud is building up on the suspension system. And it also splashes onto the body it didn't get on your shoes though. The suspension works well if you're riding around in the city just dropping off of curbs, but the suspension itself isn't really designed for heavy off-roading. Light off-roading will handle fine, but under my 220 pound frame, I was able to find myself bottoming out on the front suspension when I would just do a small little willy and lift up the front of the scooter maybe six to eight inches off of the ground. And I don't think this scooter is designed for heavy off-roading. It's a commuter scooter. And as a commuter scooter, it performs really well. It goes fast it goes far the problem is it's heavy so that just know that this is going to be a heavy scooter and if you have a lot of stairs to go up and down if you have to move this in and out of a car a vehicle or public transportation it's going to take up more space because of the wide handlebars that do not fold and it's just going to be heavier i wish the scooter tire was a little bit wider a lot of the 10 inch scooters come with a 10 by 3 inch tire this is a 10 by 2.7 inch tire a little bit wider helps with stability the kickstand isn't the most stable it doesn't instill a lot of confidence if you have this on perfectly flat ground it'll do great and the last negative about the scooter is the pricing is a little bit high for the range however really it's a top quality scooter we haven't seen a scooter with this many features at this price point so you're paying a little bit extra but you're getting a higher quality machine for the amount of money that you're paying for this scooter I kind of feel like it should come with hydraulic brakes. Drum brakes are nice because they require very low maintenance and these drum brakes actually work really well. There's just something about hydraulic brakes that adds that much more of a premium feel. I would normally agree with that 100%, but the regen braking on the scooter works so well that you almost don't even need the regular brakes. So it's not necessarily all about the specs. And in this case, the regen braking is pretty fabulous. And just, just for people back home, that's the regen. This is the drum brakes. Overall, the scooter is a great scooter. There's very little to hate about it. The overall quality and ride feel of the scooter is premium. Who do you think should get the Apollo City? If you prioritize quality over top speed and range, you definitely want to check out the Apollo City. Check out our full written review at our freshly updated website, freshlycharged.com. Thanks for watching, and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.